Hi there, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. This is Jill. Have you ever wished that you could save for the things that you wanted to save and either feel comforted by the emergency savings that you have or take those grand adventures you've always wanted to take? That's what we'll talk about today. Money often costs too much. Ralph Waldo Emerson. On this podcast, we're going to continue our conversation about money using the book Get Good With Money by Tiffany Alish. She's the budget nista and she's so good. Today, we're going to talk about what can we do to save money? How can we start saving for emergencies? Or how can we get to the point where we're saving for the things we dream of? We're thinking about the places we want to go. She says that what you have to do is save like a squirrel. I love this analogy because she brings up the point that when squirrels see a beautiful day out there, everything's perfect. The weather's perfect. Life is going good. The squirrel is out there collecting nuts, saving for the future, preparing for the winter, preparing for a time when maybe life isn't so good. Human beings are the exact opposite. We see a beautiful day and we buy a new car. We go to the beach and we get a new TV. We just think of happy times as exactly the opposite as a squirrel. And if we could be more like a squirrel and save during the good times, we will have a better time in the bad times. She says it will help us bolster ourselves. If we can learn how to save, it will protect us from emergencies. She says the two primary purposes of creating and maintaining savings are to see you through tough times and give you the ability to invest. That's a really good plan because, first of all, things happen irregularly. It struck me when I didn't have any money that as soon as I had $200 to my name, my car would break down. Random bill would come my way. It just kept hitting me and hitting me and hitting me, and I could never get ahead. And at one time when I first refinanced my house, I was talking to the banker about it, and he mentioned the fact that I didn't really have any savings at all. And I said, yeah, but what happens is is I get these bills and then I get behind again. And he says, you will never be able to save money successfully until you have at least a little money in an emergency savings. Because then when the car breaks down, I have the money right there and I don't have to put it on the credit card and get myself into trouble all over again. And he was right. As soon as I was able to almost get my first thousand dollars in savings, suddenly my life got a lot better. So that's what she's really talking about when she's talking about saving money. She says that too many of us live for the moment without thinking about the future. So she said that she wants us to make a list of our expected abundant times. I love these expected abundant times. Well, if I got a bonus at the end of the year, woo, money. If I got a tax refund, whoa, there's a couple of thousand dollars. I'm going to buy a new TV. That's where I really fell down. She wants you to actually identify those abundant things and make a list of them. Do you know that you always get $50 from grandma for your birthday? Those are your acorns. And you're a squirrel now and you're going to start saving your acorns. She said that everyone should have an emergency fund. It's our backup plan. Again, if my car breaks down and something goes wrong in my life, you have to have something that can back you up. If you can't overcome these bad events, you're going to keep getting into debt over and over again. Now that you have your acorn list, the list of all the surprise money, that's not so much a surprise, coming in throughout the year, it's time to make a list of all the savings that you need to do. She said that we should have six months of bills in our savings account for emergencies. That means if something were to happen to your company, if something were to happen to your job, you could live for six months without a job. That will cover all those other things, furnace breaking down, your car breaking down, something happening where you have to stay in a hotel that you didn't expect to, that six months of savings is enough to see you through anything that goes wrong. Now you have to calculate how much do you have to set aside for those emergencies. Also take a look at your individual goals, including investing. There's the emergency fund, but maybe there's the trip that you always wanted to take or the new car that you were hoping to get in a year or two. Those are savings goals that you have. You're going to have to break those down into 12 monthly accounts so that you know how much money you have to put away. And then she talks about 
what she calls a noodle budget. And the noodle budget is basically where you calculate the basic lowest amount of money you need to have. You're eating ramen noodles every day. It's the only thing you can afford to eat. How much is the bare amount of money that you could survive on? That's what she calls the noodle budget. But that way you can at least start with three months of the noodle budget and work your way into six months of the noodle budget. That's not going to be fun. It's not going to be a good life, but at least it's just a temporary emergency if something really bad happened. When she talks about starting to do these emergency savings and doing these other types of accounts, what I found was easiest for me was to do this at times when I got raises. I've mentioned this in podcasts before, but essentially I figured out at a point I was making enough money where I was living comfortably. My bills were getting paid. I could buy a few things here and there. I could go to dinner. I could go on a vacation every year. I started then taking every dime over that every time I got a raise and putting that entire money first to my emergency savings, then to my 401k, and then to a Roth IRA. A little bit more just so I had some savings. I've been working on this for decades, just taking every raise, every surprise amount of money, But I found those acorn saving moments to be easier for me to get to the point where I could actually save money. You'll have to see what works best for you. She said that you have to ask yourself anytime you're going to buy something, do I need it? Do I love it? Do I like it? Or do I want it? There's a lot of times when we buy stuff and we think we want it. We don't really know. And these questions she hopes will help you analyze whether or not you should really buy those things. She says you should even wear a wristband with them on it. And I think she even sells those. She wants you to know that if this is a low cost item, are you still going to enjoy this in a month? If this is a higher cost item in three to six months, is this still going to bring you joy? Which makes me think about the Marie Kondo movement and all these people looking at these items that they bought and seeing if it brought them joy. Wouldn't it be better if we could ask those questions before we bought it? I know once I started at the beginning of the pandemic cleaning out some of my rooms that I had, it made me a little sad when I would see this item and I thought, oh, I had such dreams for this item. Never really worked very well. It was sometimes because I just bought the cheapest model possible and it turned out to be garbage. Sometimes it actually saves you money to buy a better thing. Sometimes I just didn't use it the way I thought I was going to do it. I started up with rules to myself of saying, unless I'm going to use something this week or a game that I was going to order online, today I'm going to play this game, I wouldn't even buy it anymore. Things were becoming so burdensome to me that I would buy them and not use them. And like I said, if you start going through your house and start throwing out stuff, it will depress you how much money is in the things that you're getting rid of, that you're giving to goodwill or that you're giving to your neighbors. But it's sad because those were things that you spent money on. If you think about the fact that the money you have is actually hours of your life, if you think about how much you earn an hour and you take something that costs $100 and you throw it out, how many hours of your life was it to earn that? Particularly more once you take out taxes and everything else out of it. So stop thinking about money as money and start thinking about money as time and try to ask those questions of yourself so that you're not wasting time on things that don't matter. She really wants you to get to the point where you're buying things that you need, that you're buying things that you're going to love, and really getting rid of the things that you just like or you just want. But she said that when we spend on the things that we really need or the things that we really love, we will start to live more of life. She said that we will learn how to really understand the best ways to spend our money, and that's going to mean living more of our own true life. It is going to make our lives better, not worse. I thought about savings as denying my fun. I'm not going to go on this trip. I'm not going to have this game I want. I'm not going to read this book I want to read. The whole thought of savings was all about depriving myself. And I have to tell you that now that I started working on doing savings and getting myself back together again, I found it's not true at all. Emergency savings means that I don't sit up at night wondering what I'm going to do about a bill. That emergency savings is about having peace of mind. If my roof went, 
I'm not going to be excited to spend money on a new roof. But you know what's also not going to happen? I'm not going to be sitting in a house with water dripping on my head. That's peace of mind. Eventually learn about yourself that that is empowering. But then she talks about the fun things that she saves money for, that she saved money so that she could go on an air balloon ride in Albuquerque, which is something she always wanted to do. She also saved money so that she could go to Greece. And she talked about how her friends used to call her cheapskate. Oh, you're such a cheapskate. You won't even come out to eat with us anymore. And then when she went to Greece, her friends were all like, so what if I I wanted to go to Greece? How did you make that happen? Right? She saved so much money that she actually got to do her dreams instead of it being a burden to her to save the money. A couple of things that she does is that, first of all, she wants you to automate the savings so that the money going into your savings account is things that you don't even have to think about. My money gets pulled out of each paycheck two days after the paycheck clears, just in case something weird happens like a holiday. I don't receive the money. It never goes into my account so that I can say, ooh, I got a lot of money in my account. It automatically goes into things. I have some of my money going into my savings account, some of my money going into my property tax account, another pull of money, half of it going into my Roth IRA and half of it going into an investment account that is meant for savings. And for those of you who think it's hard, I understand. I was even asked at one point to put $25 a month into my 401k plan by an HR person who only wanted the best for me and I couldn't even bring myself to do it. It was too depressing. It was too much out of my money. And I thought I had to put every dime towards my credit cards. So I understand how hard that sounds, but you work slowly, you take small steps, you will get there. She does one thing even more interesting. So we talked about the four different accounts in the last podcast that she has you have. So one checking account where your paychecks go into, one checking account where your bills come out of, one savings account for your six months of emergency savings or as much as you can get, and then the last one is everything else. When she goes to a store and if she saw a watch that she wants to buy, she actually can't buy it. She's not going to put it on credit card, but she has to go home, take the money that's in that fourth savings account, put it into an account where she can pay for it, which gives her a 24-hour waiting period. It gives her a chance to calm down. I don't know if you're anything like me, but sometimes when I get this fever to buy something, the impulse becomes so strong. I really want to get this thing. Wouldn't this be fun? Wouldn't this be an exciting game? Isn't that a funny t-shirt? But when I started giving myself this rule that said everything I need to buy has to be on this list. If it's not on the list, then it has a one week waiting period. And then if I want it a week later, I ended up buying it. It's not quite as strict as what she was doing. I like her idea a lot better. It really makes you think about it. It really makes you pull the money out and put it somewhere else. I've seen other types of budgeting places that tell you you should just have this money in cash so that you actually have to physically hold the money that's going to go for this new watch, this new item, this new game and pay for it. I think that's a bit hard to do in our modern time. But, you know, whatever it is that makes that money real to you again, that's going to help you save for your dreams as well as for your peace of mind. She said that just too often our money is too easily at our fingertips. And when it's easy to get, it's easier for us to spend. She understands it's hard for us to deny ourselves anything. But you know what? It'll make us save for the things that we really want to do. And that's the goal, right? To actually not spend mindlessly, but spend with the knowledge that there are things we want to do in our lives. There are things that we want to get. Save the money for those exciting things. It'll be even better because we didn't just buy 13 pairs of shoes and four watches and six shirts. We ended up buying whatever it was that's really our dream. Summary, be like a squirrel. During good times, save the acorns. Figure out what the acorns are. When do you know that money is coming in? Maybe even some big quantities of money and put a dollar amount on those acorns so that you know how much you can save. Two, look at all the different things that you're trying to save for. First of all, you're trying to get to the point where you have six months of savings. 
What would it cost you to live for six months, not extravagantly, but just live in case something happened to your job or something happened to your house or your car? Three, figure out your noodle budget. That means what's the bare minimum you need to live? If something really catastrophic happened in your life, how much money would you have to make to cover you just eating the bare minimum food, doing the bare minimum things? Four, decide on your spending, whether you need it, you love it, you want it, you like it, and then make sure that you only buy the things that you really need or that you really love. Don't buy the things that you just like or you just want, or you're going to end up with a whole house full of stuff that you're going to end up throwing out and then you're going to feel really sad about it. Automate your savings, both your savings for your emergency funds but also your savings for your dreams, savings for other things that you want to get. Is it a new car? Is it a new trip? Start making those savings automatic. And even if you can't save enough money to get those things, at least start putting some things in those funds. Challenge, let's do a little bit of dreaming. Come up with a list of the savings accounts you want to have. Again, emergency savings comes first. That's the hard one to get. It's a lot of money, but it's the one that's going to let you sleep at night. It's the one that's going to keep you from worrying all the time. Then think about the other things. Are there trips you want to save for? Are there items that you want to save for? But start coming up with that list so that you understand how much money it's going to take to get your dreams. Because again, this is about honesty. And once we know what it is we want, it'll be easier for us to attain it, even if it takes small steps. And now for our fun entertainment advice of the week. This one comes from Raising Hope. Live like a princess on money that somebody else gave me. (laughs) (laughs) That is the dumbest thing I ever heard. Money you don't have to work for is the best kind. They're getting paid for not having a job. That's the best kind of job not to have. That money is the best money, but the next best kind of money is the kind of money in your savings account the one that gives you peace of mind. All right, everyone, thanks for listening to the podcast. If you could remember to leave a review, I'd appreciate it. Again, I'm coming up on my one-year anniversary of this podcast, and I hope that it's been helpful for you. And I'm trying to get more listeners. Again, I want to become the super podcaster of the world, and I need your help to get there. Thanks so much and have a great week.